Second part of the weekend is that I, I ended up going to um, uh, club night. I ended up going to see Mind Against play at E1 uh, this past Saturday, which was absolutely banging. So just as I finished my set at 1, Frankie picked me up. We left the place about 1.30, got an Uber over to E1 in Wapping and basically raved out in it for uh, the set with Mind Against. Um, interesting venue, E1. Absolutely, it's a huge venue, first of all, right? It's absolutely massive. It's a massive space. Um, two big rooms. Rooms that probably fit, I'm going to say, 500 people in each room, each of its own bar. Um, the other room had like a little VIP section to the left of the DJ booth. So DJ booth was on like, it's, you know, usually some clubs have a DJ booth right bang in the middle of a, of like a, of like a square space. No, sorry. They have a DJ booth, yeah, usually right bang in the middle of the back wall of a DJ space. So if like, if there's a back wall of a square, the, the DJ booth will be right in the middle, right? The DJ booth in E1 is sort of like shifted to the left-hand side so that they can fit this like barricaded VIP bit in, which is just in front of the DJ booth, which is strange really being in a space. I always, um, how can I say this? In my opinion, I think dance music is intrinsically collaborative and it's uh, democratic and it's um, welcoming with everybody, right? I think if you come in with a good attitude, if you come in with the right kind of energy, if you come in to have a good time and you're about the music, dance music will give you what you want, right? I don't really think we need to kind of adopt the commercial LA, um, Soho, kind of glitz and glamour side of it, or even that beef side of it where there's VIPs. It doesn't need to do that. Like, it just felt a bit weird seeing a DJ set in a dance music nightclub with a VIP booth. It kind of, that bit, of, even if there was a, just, honestly, just like a little barricade. You know the barricades you see when you go to a football stadium or something, right? Or to a concert hall, the ones that kind of, to control crowds and stuff, right? Just, that was all it was. And that one little metal thing, which is what, which is what makes me think I have a real big soft spot and I empathize a lot with the Berlin way of doing things, even though for some other people in Europe, especially people in America, it can be a little bit, and Americans probably get it because I think they have a lot of, issues themselves with the kind of club culture entry especially some of the higher ones like one oak and stuff right it's a it's a lot it's a lot of uh there's a lot of payola involved there's a lot of politics there's a lot of like kind of like classism and racism sometimes mixing it so i think they probably get it right um but in europe for the most part there's this idea that if you have money you can go to a new club right if you can pay you can get in for the most part even vip bits right if you slip the, the bouncer a couple of extra dollars he can maybe just bump you up the queue it just is what it is what it is right but then you go to a place like Berlin where they definitely don't care about what's in your pocket, don't care what's in your bank balance. If you're not the right person for the club, in their opinion, they just won't let you in. And that's it, right? Obviously, you've got the benefit of being in Berlin where there's plenty of other places to go to, so you don't have to, you know, you're not really that fucked up really in that regard. But I do have sympathy for it because I think if you are that picky about who comes into your club, the reason why you do that is because you've had experiences where if you let everybody in, all it takes is one bad person, one couple of bad instances to completely ruin the mood of the party. And as we know, as humans, we'll have friends in our group who are, let's say, maybe they're not the most, um, we'll have friends in our group who are kind of volatile, right? Who kind of maybe have a personality where it could go either way on a night out. And we know that sometimes when it goes the other way, it can really affect how we enjoy ourselves and it can have an effect on everything you do in the future. Because then you could be like, you know what? I can't invite that friend out because he's going to bring that friend, which then ruins that relationship. Or I can't invite them over here or I can't invite them for a drink. It kind of ruins the dynamic of the relationship, right? It kind of sets it off into a bad course for the rest of your life, really, for the most part, unless they, that person realizes their mistake. So we know how important it is to cultivate the right people. So I think if with that in mind, that little fence, even though it was nothing, really even though i think the party was great and the mood was awesome i think that fence did kind of leave a little bit of a bad taste in their mouth it kind of made the atmosphere a bit strange because the people behind the fence on the other side really did feel as if they were like in this special group like they were like you know oh we're vips when all they did was just pay extra money to get behind the fence that was a bit close to the decks but you know you're still not playing you're not going behind the green room you know, um, I don't know. It's just, that is what it is. Isn't it? I, don't, I don't think they even got extra merch or anything. It was just like, you know, that will just, you just get to go near to the booth. And I think dance music by its very nature, which is probably why people hate EDM so much, because maybe it celebrates the cult of the DJ too much, right? The whole open arms thing and everyone trying to get closer to them or wanting to get, you know, splashing their face with a cake. Maybe that's why people hate EDM because intrinsically dance music isn't really about the DJ. It's about everything but the DJ. It's obviously the sum who have kind of been able to kind of balance it very well, who are, who are also superstar DJs, also play to kind of, you know, great crowds who don't really care where the DJ is standing. But for the most part, you don't really want that to be the main focal point of your night. But again, I won't, I won't put it, I won't kind of uh, 
tear down E1 too much on that regard. I think, you know, they might be serving their community. Maybe the community they kind of um, cater to want that kind of thing. But for me, it wasn't the best look. But anyway, we got we got, to, got to E1. It's in Wapping. It's a little bit out of the way. It's in that weird kind of dead zone between like South London and Central East London or whatever it's called, right? So it's a bit it's a bit hard to get home after normal hours on bus or public transport. But with an Uber, it's like 20 minutes. So it's not too bad to get back and forth. So by the time we left Leighton Stone to come down to Strap, to come down to Wapping, sorry, it was kind of basically 20 minutes. We get there. It's quite a big queue to get in, but most of it we're lucky because it's some non-ticketed people trying to get in. So we just have to quickly get um, scanned through. Um, the search was pretty aggressive. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of security stops. So the, the kind of, you know, they kind of have you lined up against a wall and you kind of have to go through like two, two or three checkpoints before you get to the cloakroom. Um, and they're all queues. You get to one person, they check your ticket. You get to another person, they check your ticket again. Then they give you a stamp. Then you get to another person, they search you. And then you get to another person and they mark you with an X to say that you've been searched. So it's like four stops, right? And the search was aggressive. Like my friend, he's got his actual balls cupped, like um, legitimately, like cupped the balls. Uh, again, I can't be too harsh on them because I think a lot of these clubs, they only do these things as a reaction to what happened previously. So I'm sure somebody must have went in there with like, I don't know, half a pound of weed or half a pound of H. Well, someone went in there with something nonsense and they were, and they kind of flew under the nose of the security. The security got blamed for it. They got threatened with, you know, if, you, if this happens again, we're going to lose our license. If we lose our license, you guys get fired and you don't have this account anymore, right? And I'm sure E1 are able to kind of, you know, pay a hefty amount in security fees. So it's to the security's best interest to ensure that they keep their client happy. So they way to do that. It's a cup our balls, right? So it is what it is. So the, our balls got cupped, uh, armpits got searched, our bags got extensively searched with lights and flashlights. So again, if you intend to go to E1 and do anything out of the ordinary, then please bear that in mind. Um, then you obviously to, you got crew to get to the cloakroom, which was long, but fair play to the guys behind the, the cloakroom decks. Like they were super r- quick and rapid with the kind of exchanges. One guy, t- two guys were doing the thing and another guy was getting the things upstairs into the hangers or bringing stuff down for people that are wanting to go. So that was fairly quick. As soon as you got to the front, you were done very fast. I think it's like three pounds for every item. So make sure you have cash. Uh, there's no uh, card system at the cloakroom thing, which is annoying, but it is what it is. I think it's always nice to kind of chuck those guys an extra quid anyway, if you end up giving them some money, because you know um, it's not a thank, it's not a thankless, it's not, a, it's the thankless charge being, it's a thankless job being the cloakroom guy for the most part. Um, you get to see the best and the worst of people when they're rolling and so yeah that got well, that was fairly smooth then got ushered into the main space um there's this massive red room that was quite nice it's best as you just about just as you're about to go past the little reception bit with the security sitting down they've got this massive red room chill area with his own bar too i think the red lights are meant to kind of induce some kind of chill or kind of zen thing i'm pretty sure red lights have that kind of effect so that was quite cool loads of benches loads of bean bags we're going to say. i don't think i remember then as you come back out there's another little main area bit where there's a bar and then the the the, the bar is right across the, from the toilets, the main toilets. And then there's a, one big room where I think it was Kaiser most or someone playing. Let me see if I can get the actual uh, resident advisor event link up on here because we got actually got, we actually weren't really in the right place, but we ended up maneuvering there after speaking to some people at the event itself. But let me see if I can get it up here. Ba, 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 ba. Go, go to my tickets actually here. My tickets. Oh, no, actually, I didn't pay for this one, did I? So let me go mind against, mind against. Uh-oh. Up on coming events, and see if they go to the events, see if they got anything here. The past ones should be on here. Uh, past events. There you go, with uh, E1. So this was the event that we went to at E1. Um... Mind Against featuring Kaismos, DJ Set, Rude, Hagelstein, and Eli Verb and Eli Vervin. So they were split into two rooms. I didn't know that. I thought they were both in the same room. So I think two were in one room and two in the other room. So I think it was my, Mind Against and Kaismos in that room. Who's the guy with a massive thing with the, all the little knobs and stuff? There was a guy who had this. I don't know who it was. Hmm. Who's this person? Okay. Doesn't matter. Anyway, there was two rooms. We were in the wrong room for a bit, but the wrong room was pretty pretty sick. The guy playing there, or who the guy was, he had this big like machine thing that he kept unplugging and plugging things into. I forgot what his name was. Um, it might have been this rude Hagelstein guy. See if I can find it. He had this, it's this big sort of like unit, this big tower block that he uses, right? And he plugs things in, in and out of it. Maybe it's this guy. Let's see if he's going to Instagram, see if he's got his machine here. No, maybe it is him. Is it him? I don't know if it was him. It must have been him, right? 
But anyway, it, it was it was amazing, man. It was bloody sick. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, We saw him play. It wasn't what we wanted to play. Well, it wasn't what we wanted to hear in the first place. But again, really good. Then we got talking to some guy that we were dancing with. He's like, oh, you're, 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 who are you here to see? And we see a man again. So I'm like, oh, there's no things in this room. and things in the other room. We're like, oh, the other room? And then we realized, oh, yeah, as you walk in next to the bar, there's another room there, right? Um, And then we walked in that room, and that room was absolutely heaving. So full of people, right? Everyone in there having a great time. Um, I think someone might have actually a video clip of it. Yeah, so this is basically it, right? The back of it, I think, of, of the actual booth. Uh, Going back to the E1. No, it's not them. Is that them here? DJ Boring, no, is that him here? Tale of Clubs, who's that? Mind Against, yeah, so he, this is the one. So there, it, this is the big massive room that they are in. Again, there's a huge sort of cylinder in space. I love the lighting as well. The lighting system in, you know what's really strange about these lighting systems in clubs? It doesn't look that impressive in real life, honestly. Like, apart from the one maybe that we saw with Trix at, my, at Mixed Garage, um, for the most part, it doesn't look that impressive. It just looks like some disco lights. But when you watch the videos back on someone's smartphone, it really works well. I'm not sure. I, I wonder if the the people are aware of that. I'm pretty sure they are. That it's like most festivals have that wall that you kind of stand in front to kind of take the picture on social media, but that has the branding on it. So I think that most of them are aware of it. But it looks great on video. In person, it just didn't look that impressive. But on video, it looks really, really cool. This is a video someone took on Instagram of the space of us. Uh, this is basically where Mighty Gets are playing. So as you walk in, you walk in towards like this is looking at the, at the DJs from the back, looking at the crowd, but the actual entrance is right at the end of the corner. So what happens is that because everyone's walking in, the front of the of, of the thing is really packed, and towards the back is a bit more space. But everyone's sort of dancing, having some good time. So effectively, if you're the DJ, you're just seeing a crowd, a fucking whole sea of people that goes from the beginning way to the back. So it must really give you a lot of good chills. So when you drop the bass and you kind of you know, up here again, everyone's hands go up. You see this whole like cascading wave of a Mexican wave of people's hands going up. It must be really give you a good tingling feeling. And again, I think it's just the right amount of size for that kind of level of DJ. Mind against are really big, but they're not like probably big as like a 1,000 room place, but they're big enough to fill a 500 place venue up really easily. And it was fucking packed full of Italians. It's amazing. I think I told my friend it the other day. He's like, it must be so cool to be Mind Against, be DJing in another city. Obviously, there's a lot of Italians in London anyway, but be DJing in another city that isn't your hometown and have so many of your people from your country come out and support you. It must be super cool. Um, so that was great to see. So they were kind of fl flying the Milanese flag there for everyone. <laughs> This is a bit, it's a clip of them playing at E1 now. Hey, it was awesome, man. It was so good, man. I really, I really enjoyed myself. Um, again, I think it was probably the most expressive I've seen Mind Against play. Oh, and that's another thing as well as a DJ set. So, Mind Against had this some um, set they uploaded recently on um Circle. I'm sure most of you guys are aware of what Circle is—an online kind of um DJing streaming uh, pl platform similar to like Boiler Room, but they do theirs in like really exotic locations, right? In a ski resort somewhere in the middle of an Aztec kind of like compound where they were doing it. In, in this kind of Colosseum bit. They just, just picked the most craziest venues and they really kind of showcase them by using a drone and stuff and they have little interviews at the end of the show. So it's a really, really, really um, great platform for DJs. And again, it goes to show just how far you can push promoting, how far you can push these live performances. It doesn't have to always be in these kind of, you know, simplistic club events. They could also be out, out of the box, crazy kind of uh, spectacles that work really well in person. It also work well on the, in the internet. That's a really rare combination, right? You get to see this crazy, amazing thing live on Facebook and you also get to experience it yourself if you end up attending these events, yeah? And they're usually in far flung places too, so some people don't really get a chance to see the DJs play in their city or in their town or at these locations, get a chance to see them as well. So all the works really well. I was expecting a very slow, somber set because a circle set, as great as it was, it was very fitting for the environment, right? But then when they came to E1, like, Mind Against brought it hard. They were slapping the bangers. Every kind of unreleased banger you've heard on Tale of Clubs, on, um, on the um, Arm to Dixon Instagram meet fan page or Intervision fan page, every, all those kind of big hits you've, play, you've heard or you've heard Tale of Us play uh, during their kind of festival run, they were playing them as well. Um, they were really going for it for an hour or an hour or two, right? They were really going for it. There was no 
wait, no chill, no easy music. Everything was dancing the whole way through. And I was having a blast. Me and my friend were just dancing, sweating our face off the entire time. Oh, another bit of advice if you're going to E1. Make sure you wear a t-shirt or a vest, right? Don't wear a long sleeve denim shirt that I did, right? And cowboy boots. You're going to die. I wore these cowboy boots when I went to, to E1, actually. And my feet have never been the same. So these boots, they're amazing in person, right? But wearing Cuban heels to go dance on nightclubs is a bad idea. So definitely, if you're going to go to E1, do not wear cowboy boots. I wore them for my DJ set because I thought it would look good with the outfit. But afterwards, to go to a nightclub to go and dance, probably not the best attire to wear. So yeah, don't wear don't wear cowboy boots. Do not wear cowboy boots. That's the plan. But um, yeah, I sweated my ass off. My feet were hurting. So that's a good um, way to kind of experience the night. And again, mine again sort of pretty impressive as DJs, man. Um, I love their setup. They have basically one person on each deck or with using a controller um, um, and a deck, a CDJ deck, and they each have two channels, um, which is quite cool. So there's no need to kind of, you know, jump back and forth on the deck. So that's really cool. Because most people, if they play back to back, when, when people play back to back, usually, they usually do like two two to three tracks on and off in it. But they just sat there like that, like like this. Each one had their deck and kind of went from there. And now here's another clip again from this person's Instagram that I just kind of plucked out of the reef, the internet space but yeah it was absolutely awesome man i loved it really good time boom 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 but yeah awesome man really really good Oh, the only other thing as well saying about this, right? Let's drop the unit. Let's drop. So the only other thing I'd say about this, right, is that again, I think maybe it's a cultural thing, maybe because I think because they're Italian, it's different there. Especially if you look at some of the Italian DJs that go and DJ beef and stuff, but. The only problem I had with it was I think there were way, way, way too many, um, way too many uh, stage uh, groupies or you know DJ groupies on the stage. I think it's a, it's a, it's not a problem, but it's a thing that is probably more prevalent within the European circuit of DJs, right? Where people want to be behind a booth and they want to kind of look. I don't know what it, what it is. They would want to be so want to stand behind the booth and kind of they're really kind of dancing to the crowd they're really showing off to the crowd which is something i never really understood i think if i was behind the booth i'd just be talking to my friends or be dancing you know kind of you're, you're back to the crowd so maybe look at the dj looking at what they're doing and really kind of you know putting your hands up in the air but you don't necessarily acting like you're as if you're doing anything right that's the thing that really makes it weird i think from my look of it outside in i think if it was me i would be like some of these other djs who kind of request to have no one else on the stage just themselves or maybe their agent or maybe their friends but no one else just your your kind of group because it feels as if sometimes a DJ booth turns into like an outdoors um, green room, right? For the most part, because everyone's there to kind of, you know, steal drinks from the DJ's rider and shit and, you know, whatever they may be doing. Um, but yeah, I think it's a bit weird, man. I think it's a bit strange. I never really understood that. I think the inclusion of the VIP thing was weird. And I think the, the prevalence of the people on the stage really hamming it up like as if they're, as if they're playing or something was bizarre. I didn't really get that. But again, I think it's just a cultural thing. Um, I think different cultures have different way of looking at stuff. I think for the most part, most... Berlin, Berlini kind of like, or even Amsterdam DJs. You don't really see that for the most part. They're not, they're not, they're not that, they're not that infused with having randoms in behind them. Maybe apart from maybe Deck Mantle, the shed face. But again, that's just the way the DJ booth is set up. But they don't really like to have people in and around them that they don't know. They want to have the DJ booth kind of cleared, have it only for the artists, right? Just be kind of really direct about that. Um, it's and again, I, I don't know. Maybe is there a way of doing it in a cool way? Probably, yeah. I think Sven Vars will be the most coolest guy with that. He's able to have people behind him in the booth, but he still makes it look like it's an actual DJ. It's a DJ thing. It's a party. It's a thing that everyone's kind of partaking in. And the people behind the booth don't look corny. But when I look at the Martinez brothers, I think some of the people behind them, I think the Martinez brothers probably look less cool or look more. I think that, yeah, the people behind the booth don't make the Martinez brothers look good. Because as a DJ, as a DJ duo, as like um, producers, as remixers, as editors, they're probably, they're probably in a class of their own, right? And they play a lot of shows. And they are really going for it. Like, they're really, really good at DJs. But I think they get given a bad rap because of the people they kind of are, are around, right? 
that sort of like circle local crowd where everyone kind of is what wants to be involved wants to get into the picture and stand as if they're doing something just a bit bizarre i kind of feel that the participation is just going to the event i think that's what dance music is about i think the moment you start putting other things outside of all of that on a pedestal it ends up being that's what basically ruined the kind of bottle service club right bottle service tables minimum spend all this outside stuff that takes away from actually just going and having a good time with your friends having a drink and listen to a dj play some good music and that's turned into some a whole other thing especially when you kind of include the idea that some record labels pay djs to play to have music promoted at their club or to have strippers dance to it like it just kind of ruins everything about the whole dance music experience right the whole discovery thing because how are you going to discover anything if the majority of the playlist is kind of predetermined by an agent or by a record label it's just not going to happen so yeah that was that was the only bad slight i'll say about the event but i think overall I think even though it was quite um, a very specific crowd, I think the crowd were really going for it. They came to have a good time. They came to dance. They came to really celebrate Mind Against as a duo and what they've done in the last couple of years, kind of blowing up and really going to the next level. Uh, what they're about to do with this album that's about to come out. Um, just everything in general, right? It feels like a real celebratory way to kind of get this year started. And again, I'm always a big fan of going to see the bigger DJs play because it kind of gives me motivation the things that I'm doing because sometimes when you go to these kind of little sceny club nights you can kind of sometimes kind of come away from it feeling like how the hell did that person get paid to play there I could do much better than that right you start to maybe build a bit of resentment a bit of jealousy um, obviously it could kind of fuel your creative pursuits and kind of make you more encouraged to kind of go home buy some more tunes discover more playlists uh, practice your mixing right upload tunes on upload mixes onto SoundCloud it can kind of force you in that direction but it could also make you a bit embittered a bit like ugh are oh, they only there because of this, that, and the other? Whereas when you go see the big dogs play, it, it puts your skill level into perspective. You're like, okay, cool. I'm good, but you know these guys are like another level of good, right? I have to kind of bring it this way. Do it. You kind of get some encouragement of saying, like, it humbles you, but you also get encouragement. That's what I'd say. Um, so yeah, it was a good night. I enjoyed it, man. I bloody enjoyed it. Um, yeah, so big up everyone that went. Again, I think the crowd was pretty good. Um, everyone had a good time no dickheads for the most part everyone was sound and safe as fuck and yeah I enjoyed it man I thought it was super super good people got some good pictures on here too that you can see um, that kind of showcase the event um, a lot of video taken a lot of pictures taken but again I think it was done in a really cool way no one was being annoying with their phone or anything so that was alright but yeah good crowd man I have to be honest it was I thought it would be terrible um, I thought it would be nuts but I think overall good crowd Loads of like shiny looking girls. That's weird to go to a club night and see girls actually dressed up. That was quite awesome. So loads of dressed up girls. Usually the clubs I go to, everyone's everyone looks like they've just been dragged through the mud. So that was quite cool. See everyone that took a shower in there. I had to take a shower because I was absolutely stenching, you know, stenching my clothes was mad. But yeah, it was good, man. I loved it. The lighting was awesome. It worked really well. Again, in person, it looked quite naff. But when you watch it back on the video, whew, That bit of nuts in it. So good, isn't it? So bloody good. So bloody good. But yeah, it was really amazing, man. Really good night. And again, um, pick up everyone that made it a good occasion, isn't it? And mind against maybe um. As I said before, I think they might be better than Tale of Us for me. They might have just overtaken Tale of Us in terms of how they produce, in terms of how they bring it on the DJ. Because again, I was so surprised. I just thought it would be really mellow compared to what I heard at Circle. But then they, it was a really different set, a really club specific set. And from what I've seen from Tale of Us, I've only seen them play a couple of times, but they tend to play the same way everywhere they go. It doesn't really um, evolve from there, which is probably the only slight you could say. Apart from that, you know, they're you know, fucking amazing producers and great remixes and stuff. But. They may be a little bit samey when they go to events, but I I don't know. I think Mind Against might have overtaken them for me. And they're pretty sound lads as well. If you watch the interview at the end of Circle video, like they seem they come across really well, man. But yeah, that was my weekend. 